As the first major American combat unit deployed to Vietnam in 1965, the 9th Marine Expeditionary Brigade landed in Da Nang. So 1965, we sent conventional troops into Vietnam. Why were the Koreans so feared in Vietnam? I've got my ideas. Let me know yours. Let's go. Under the cover of the Many Flags campaign, the United States war effort in Vietnam was supported by five allied countries. These were Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, Thailand, and the Philippines. By far, the largest contingent was sent by the Republic of Korea. Being one of the closest allies of the United States in Asia, South Korea was willing to repay the Americans for the help given to them during the Korean War. Already in 1954 and 1961, South Korea had offered to send its troops to Vietnam to help defeat the communists. On both occasions, the Americans and South Vietnamese had refused the offer. Ten Why did we refuse the offer before the kickoff of the conventional war? So we have troops in Vietnam, advisors, non-conventional troops in the late 50s to keep the communists from coming into Vietnam and doing what they did in Korea. So you got to ask the why there. Let's keep going. Years later, however, amidst the need for growing foreign participation, the United States and its allies put the proposal on the table for Korea to enter the war. After a series of negotiations held between the United States and South Korean administrations, the agreement was made for South Korea to send its armed forces to South Vietnam under the following terms. The United States forces in Korea would remain in the same number to prevent a threat from North Korea, the United States would support the modernization of the South Korean army, and the United States would finance all expenses of Korean troops in Vietnam, including transportation, equipment, and allowances. So hear what he said there. The U.S. agrees to finance the whole operation in Vietnam, plus help modernize the Korean military. So Korea is giving up some blood. We're giving up a lot of resources to get their support to fight the Chinese and the Russians. So communism, at least this was the theory, was coming into Vietnam we wanted to halt it. After the Korean National Assembly authorized the campaign on May 21, 1964, Korean units began to arrive in South Vietnam. The first Korean combat unit to arrive in Vietnam was the Capital Division, better known as Mango, the Tiger Division. The Tiger Division was one of the most famous units in the entire South Korean Army. The division that came to Vietnam consisted of only two brigades, as one brigade remained in Korea for reasons of national security. The Tigers arrived in Vietnam in September 1965 and were deployed to the Queen Non region, replacing the American 1st Brigade of the 101st Airborne Division. You got the Koreans coming in right at the kickoff of the Vietnam War for all conventional troops, right? And they're bringing in a lot of horsepower, right? They're bringing the best of the best. Now you think for a second here, the U.S. at this point had a big pool of draftees in. And the war at this stage was still not frowned upon by the counterculture movement. It was still a popular war because we've got a bunch of people fighting the war that were World War II children. So they were patriotic, and the Koreans were 12 years fresh out of war fighting on their home soil. Vietnam, consisting of an armored company, a reconnaissance company, an engineering battalion, four field artillery battalions, and three infantry regiments, the division counted 23,865 men. The unit was deployed in the Ning Hoa district at the junction of Route 1 and Route 21, with the task of controlling the local population and defending the Ning Hoa Air Base and Cameron Bay. By the end of the war, South Korea deployed two more units, a Marine battalion that arrived in 1967 and a 12-man C-46 crew in 1969. Well, that wasn't the end of the war. I'd say 1969, probably the height of the war. You know, we started withdrawing some troops into the 70s, 75, I believe, was the last time we had troops there. But the late 60s was the real push in Vietnam. In total, the Republic of Korea deployed 47,872 men to Vietnam between 1964 and 1969. All deployed units were under the command of Major General Che Myung Shin. Now, what's significant about what he just said? Who's controlling the Koreans? Another Korean general. So you don't have General Westmoreland or some allied general. They're standalone. So they're going to report to their own countrymen. That changes things up quite a bit. When you don't have to report to a politician, effectively the commanding general reports back to the president. you got to think, too, this is the first war we had photojournalism at this level. The recruitment for the Vietnam tours was made strictly on a voluntary basis. South Korean commanders were able to carefully pick candidates as the number of volunteers largely exceeded the volume of the division. 
This was the first international engagement of the South Korean army. That's important. They had more, more supply than they had demand. And it was all volunteers. You got the best of the best Koreans who wanted to fight in this war, right? 12 years after a war on their own home soil. So things probably aren't looking that rosy on the economy front. The U.S. was pumping quite a bit of money in to support South Korea at this stage. So they're going to have, just right off the bat, naturally, a better selection of troops. Because all volunteer, and they wanted to be there. For Once recruitment was over, the Tiger Division was filled with the best South Korea had. The command cadre was also the best the Army could offer. Handpicked by senior commanders, the cream of the crop of the Korean Military Academy were chosen for the mission. There a question for you guys. Would it be better, let's look back at Vietnam, in hindsight, to have less troops but more well-trained troops. So instead of just say 100,000 troops, we take that same amount of resources to train the 100,000 and train 50,000, but train them up more. The best of the best, only volunteers, only people who wanna be there, only people who have been well-trained. We didn't cut back the boot camp or the training to bring them there. So we had the cream of the crop. Would that be better than what we've done? Let me know in the comments. Put under the guidance of battle-hardened senior officers, veterans of the Korean War. American soldiers and officers had only words of praise for their Korean allies. The Korean army had come a long way since the Korean War, when they were still learning from the American military. In Vietnam, Koreans were completely independent, showing great skill in all aspects of warfare from tactics to logistics. I would think the Koreans being totally independent was one of their significant advantages. Like I said earlier, they're not reporting to politicians, they're reporting to a Korean general. Their job is, here's the mission, get it done. They're not worried about search and destroy to make friends and influence people kind of thing. You know, the U.S.'s mission change, rules of engagement change, similar to what happened in the desert in the last two decades. The South Korean soldiers were very thorough in their search and destroy missions. They would scan the designated area, leaving no rock unturned. Once the enemy was located, Korean soldiers would encircle them, slowly closing in and leaving very little space for the enemy to slip through. The Korean troops attacked their enemies with everything they had. Although they did not kill as many as the American soldiers, the count of weapons and material they killed. Well, there was less Koreans, right? So the total number is not going to be as high. Now, their rules of engagement, them getting burned by a bad kill, right? What my heart's telling me is they don't have the same rules that the American troops had. Am I saying they're bad people? Absolutely not. I'm saying they're fighting war. They're not fighting politics, and that's what Vietnam evolved to over time. Captured was much higher. They did their best to ensure that each of their attacks was a complete blow for the enemy, whilst keeping their own casualty rate far below average. It was not unusual for Korean units to have a kill ratio of more than 20 to 1 on their wow. missions. For these reasons, the Americans leaned heavily on their Korean allies in performing dangerous missions. Well, they weigh heavily because they're more effective or because it wasn't their own countrymen, right? Is it easier to send in somebody you don't know to fight a battle or somebody you know? You want the best guy to do the job, but if it's a shitty job, you're probably not going to pick your best friend, right? Let me know what you think about that in the comments. February 1967, the 11th Company of the Blue Dragon Brigade suffered a night attack from two Viet Cong regiments in their base near the Job Bing village in the Quen Gai province in South Vietnam. Surrounded with barbed wire and claymore mines, the base was attacked from all sides. As usual, the VC attacked in waves supported by strong mortar fire. Masses of charging VC soldiers did not frighten the Korean Marines who fired back with every weapon they had. Bullets rained on the charging enemy. Now what's the difference between the Korean military and the Vietnamese military? Korean military funded by the U.S., the Vietnamese funded by Russia and China. But the Vietnamese are fighting on their home soil. And they've been fighting for decades there, the French before the U.S. got involved. The big thing, it's their home soil. And the second big thing is, who's the bad guy if you're fighting in Vietnam? Somebody invaded the U.S., it could be your grandmother or 12-year-old. Same thing in Vietnam. It could be an old lady supporting, which is your enemy. It could be a child. You just don't know. They're not wearing conventional uniforms, a lot of North Vietnamese. So it makes things trickier. So you almost have to fight a trickier war as the Allies. But that gets into collateral damage. 
civilians as they may call it, but are they really civilians? It's a very complicated thing in warfare. Nonetheless, the Viet Cong broke into the base and the fight turned into hand-to-hand -hand combat. Base commander, Captain Chong Kyung Gin, ordered his men to pull back to lure the VC deep into the base. Then, he sent two squads to seal the gap from which the Viet Cong entered and trapped the enemy. The Koreans charged at the enemy with their bayonets. By morning, Korean Marines had pushed the enemy back to the jungle. After the air was cleared, there were 254 bodies of Viet Cong lying all over the place. Only 15 Korean soldiers had been killed. The vehement performance of South Korean troops, however, left a stain on their service in Vietnam. Korean soldiers often attacked villages that were suspected to provide cover and supplies to insurgents. Showing now you just heard that their aggression was a stain on their service in Vietnam. Is it really a stain? It's complicated. So you have a village, right? And there's 100 people, 10 bad guys. You go in there, everybody looks the same. You think there's a bad guy. It's a momentary thing. It's hard to say, okay, that's not the bad guy. It's easy to second guess this is my point. We don't have videotape where we can just burn somebody because you're looking at a frame of a clip on a second, right? So that's where I think, looking back on history, we gotta look at this history with the proper glasses on. We have an enemy that's asymmetrical, right? Asymmetrical warfare. Who is the enemy? No mercy. Korean soldiers were known to commit several massacres of Vietnamese civilians, about which numerous reports were made. Despite all the reports, these crimes were tolerated by Korean HQ and American commanders as well. Well, let's stop there. I don't think that atrocities were tolerated. I think it's warfare. I think it's easy to look back for any journalist, whether it be in 1970, look at it and say it was tolerated, or now, and say it's the higher-ups tolerated. No. You're fighting a war where you can't tell who your enemy is. And people get killed. And it's war. It's not making friends. It's breaking things and killing people. That's the point, right? As the number of American soldiers in the country decreased, Korean troops more or less maintained the strength of their forces. It was only after the Paris Peace Agreement was signed in 1973 that the entire South Korean contingent left Vietnam with the rest of the foreign troops. Those of you Vietnam vets out there, did you work with any Koreans? Let me know in the comments. So the war ends, we get out of it completely 1975. Almost like what we're doing now in Afghanistan. We say we're leaving Bagram, we're leaving Air Force bases behind. But really, the contingents left a while ago. Same thing in Vietnam. A big contingent didn't started slowing down because we realized what was our mission? What does winning look like? Thanks for watching.